Now that we've got the image sliced up into the number of pieces we want so that we can create clickable areas, uh, now it's time to save it. So to save it, go to File, Save for Web and Devices. And if you don't do anything, it's going to default to, generally it's what the previous setting was that you did, or in some cases, Photoshop picks a setting for you. Um, in this case, I've got JPEG, medium, quality of 51. And if I were just to click Save right now, like so, it's going to save everything at that setting. Um, sometimes that's all right but sometimes you want to do some individual tweaking. So I'm just going to, just to check and see what's happening, uh, make sure I have the Slice Select tool here. I'm going to click on the logo. I don't know what happened there. I'm going to click on the logo. All right. So now I've got the logo selected. And as a JPEG, it's 5K. Looks OK. Let's just try what's going to happen if we make it a ping 8. Uh, ping 8 it went from 5K to 3K and still looks pretty good. So the object when you're saving for the web is always to save files as small as possible in terms of the file size with good quality. So in this case, I know from experience that because this is a flat color, the turquoise is a flat solid color, and we've got type on it and a logo, that these sorts of images optimize best as GIFs or pings. Best meaning lowest file size, but still good quality. Everything else in this image is a gradient or has enough color changes in it that probably it needs to be a JPEG. So what I'm going to do then is, if you notice as I click on these different images, or I'm sorry, different slices, each of those has that same JPEG setting. So if you notice it stays the same 51 quality. So they're all by default the same. The only one that's different is this one that I've changed to a ping 8. Now, depending on your image, you may want to do more with pings. You may want to tweak them a little bit. Like, I could go back here and actually try cut the color in half from 64 to 32. It still looks pretty good. And I'm going to go down to the bottom, and I'm going to zoom it so I can get a little better look at what I'm doing here. Space to move it. Still looks pretty good compared to this. This is the original. Still looks pretty good at 32 colors. Let me cut that in half. 16 colors. Still looks pretty good. And now we're down to just 2.3K. My guess is if I go much lower than that, it's going to start to look a little bit pixelated. Starting to happen there. And clearly, if I go here, it's starting to look really pixelated. It's starting to break up. So I think 16 colors is probably the sweet spot for that. So we went from a starting point of about 5K to 2.3K. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, in this image, everything else looks good as a medium quality JPEG. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. We could individually try and fine tune these. But in this case, that image is pretty consistent all the way through. So let's keep it the same. So I'm happy with what I have here now. By the way, if you notice down here, you can see how if we kept this as a JPEG, as a JPEG quality goes down, here we're at 25 quality, you start to see this artifact or this kind of model look starting to happen. So um, that's why I decided to use the logo as a JPEG rather, I, I'm sorry, as a ping rather than a JPEG. All right, so we're good to go. I'm going to click on Save. I'm going to name this Try-C. And I'm going to, in this case, I just want to put it on my desktop for the time being. And I'm putting a new folder called Slicing 
demo, you obviously would name your folder differently. You might put it in a different place, but um, be sure you know where this is going to. Here where it says format, let's be sure to use HTML and images. Uh, default settings, since we normally work in XHTML, I'm going to change it to XHTML. And I want to save all slices. So go to the desktop, click save. There it is. And now if I look on my desktop, I should find, uh, if I remember what I called it, I called it slicing demo. Okay, there it is. Open that up. And notice that there's an HTML page and an images folder that were that was created automatically. And inside that images folder, there's all of the slices that we created and this new one that Photoshop added called the spacer GIF. And this is what actually helps keep this looking um, the way it should when we open it up in the browser. So if I take the HTML and I I'll right click on it, open with Firefox. Firefox opens up and there is our Tri-C home page. Um, if you want to see what it's doing, if you go to Outline using the Web Developer Toolbar and Outline Tables and Table Cells, that's what we have. So what it's done, what Photoshop has done, is put each of these slices into a table cell. Um, I'm going to turn off the element name so they come back together. And so you can see that it's divided up as a table. If we look at the code, you'll see save for web slices. There they are. Table 01 is what gets named by default. And there's all the individual slices in a table. So this is not the preferred way to do a website we would do it with CSS rather than with tables. But this would be very useful, for example, if you were doing an HTML email, which actually doesn't work very well with CSS at this point and works much better as a table. Um, so, okay, I think we're probably done. That's what we have now. And at this point, what you could do in terms of completing the assignment for the week is to take this entire table and put it inside one of your website pages. But for now, we're done.